What, 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 welcome back to the Commanders Declassified Podcast. I am your host for all things Washington Commanders. I screwed that up. Once again, I am L.E. I am part of this podcast. Brian is here. He is also part of this podcast. How you doing, Brian? Yeah. I, I'm doing awesome. I need a haircut. This is, uh, if you're listening right now, my hair is out of control. I need a haircut. Yeah, if, if you're listening on audio, think of like early Ludacris before he got his hair braided. He's he's busting that out right now. It's uh, it's bad. It's bad. But uh, I got to go. I got to drive to Virginia to get my hair cut at the same place I've gotten my hair cut since I was five years old. So I got to I got to get to Virginia sometime this week. For those of you who don't know, there's a yacht that does haircuts. Happen to have a barber in the yacht that Brian <laughs> visits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, somewhere yeah. in and as soon as I show up, they'll call the police. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Eric is out tonight. He's graduating from cosmetology school, so he wanted to be there to receive his, right. his diploma. <laughs> uh, Eric, man, we think about you, buddy. Uh, but right. we're going to talk a little bit about what Eric Bieniemy's offense is going to bring in terms of the screen game. Ooh. When Scott Turner, or the coordinator that shall remain nameless, was brought in, we thought we'd have this creative offense with a bunch of motion and screens and to talk about having um, Antonio Gibson and J.D. McKissick on the field at the same time and what they – all that. None of that happened, right? The offense was very vanilla. It was just dump it off, dump it off, dump it off, right? But now Ooh. we have Eric Bieniemy in the house, and we think that he's going to bring some creativity to the offense, in particular with the short game. So tonight what we're going to do is we're going to um, – for those of you that are watching on YouTube, I'm going to pull up a video, and uh, this is going to be from the 2017-18 uh, season with the Chiefs. We're going to take a look at that, and I am then going to talk about it with Brian to show you what we are saying. As soon as I figure out what the heck I'm doing, um, all right, and, share it, screen. And one of the things, while while you set that up, it, one of the things that we've been hearing through OTAs and through mini camps, every beat reporter doesn't matter who you listen to, JP Finley, uh, John Kime, uh, Sam Fortier, Nikki Javala, all of them have discussed the screen day, uh, screen game, and how the enemy has been focusing on it, and how different it has looked in terms of. Uh, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but our defense has been completely fooled on um, the screens that the enemy uh, has been running. In particular, there was one that it really stuck out, uh, you know, to me was um, the entire defense uh, was so badly fooled. The entire defense was on the right side of the field. Sam Al threw it back to the left side where Antonio Gibson caught it had three blockers in front of him, and the only person that was in front of him was one safety. And if this was a game, he would have gone probably for a touchdown. And we haven't seen that. We haven't seen that. So uh, to get this play that you're about to show us and to get the enemy's focus on the screen game, much needed, much needed. Absolutely. So uh, I want to give proper credit for this video. This is coming from James Light's YouTube channel. Go check him out. Subscribe to his stuff. This is a screen game, a slot middle screen. I'm going to get this started, Brian, and we'll talk about what we see here. So, first of all, what do you see from the formation here, Brian? So, we've got a three-by-one, right? We've got three uh, wide receivers or three receivers to the left-hand side, and we've got one over to uh, the right to the far side of the field. Um, and, you know, it, it's a little hard to tell, but I think, you know, Look at some of the splits of these offensive linemen. If you and you can tell their splits are are wider by the defensive lines um, alignment on them. They're spread out. They're not close together. This is important because you're going to have a lot of big bodies um, that are going to need to be on the move, and you've got to navigate that traffic. And you're trying to create space. Um, that you can get the blockers out in front of a running back wide receiver. In this case, I think it would probably be a wide receiver, right, um, to catch this ball and, uh, you know, have space and uh, turn this into a big chunk gain. So um, that's kind of the first thing that you notice here. I do. You also notice Travis Kelsey in the slot split yes. out, right? Yep. Um, and generally speaking, when Kelsey's in the slot, he's getting the ball. Defense looks like they're in a cover four, I believe. Um, we'll see after the snap, but you see the two high safeties, right? The cornerbacks at least, what, uh, eight yards off the ball, right? Yeah. Yep. This guy down, uh, the guy at the top of the screen, the corner at the top of the screen, he may have some match coverage, but uh, there, it looks like they're going to drop back into a zone on the screen game. 
And of course, you see, is this Josh Norman over here yeah. <laughs> on defense? Let's see, yeah, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens here. And I'll pause it as we go through so we can give an accurate description to our listeners. So, um, all right. So the ball is about to be snapped to Mahomes here. That ball snap, boom, freeze. So, Brian, tell me what you're seeing here. So, you know, your receivers are going out. But the big thing here is for the offensive linemen, they have to really sell um, that they're pass blocking um, and that they're 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 staying there. Because if they leave too early, that immediately tells the defensive linemen it's a screen and all defensive linemen are taught on a screen. You get in the offensive lineman's hip pocket and follow him to the football because he's going to take you right to whoever's going to catch it. Um, so they really have to sell it. They can't leave too early. They've got to. They've got to hold that block for a second, maybe two seconds, and then get out uh, and run and reset that line of scrimmage wherever it is, left, right, middle, um, you know, whatever the play calls for. So they all look to be engaged with a defender, all four linemen. Um, there's a big, nice alley right in the middle of the field. And like you said, um, it looks like a uh, some type of zone defense here. All the defenders, um, nobody's backpedaling. Everybody's kind of just watching um, those receivers as they uh, run out. And it looks like uh, the uh, the closest receiver there uh, may be the, uh, the guy who uh, gets the ball. But we'll see what uh, how this plays out. Yeah, it's definitely at least cover three. This this quarterback dropped back almost to where the safeties were. No, wow. Look at Tyree Kill at the bottom of the screen. Oh, is that who for that is? You, yeah. For those of you listening, Tyree Kill is at the bottom of the screen. If he was the one to catch the ball right now, he wouldn't be touched for at least 10 yards, at yeah. least. And with his speed, who knows, right? Yeah. Um, the, the, tight, the slot guy, Travis Kelsey, is running like a shallow out almost. It looks like he's coming to set up to block, but Terry Kills just sitting there waiting. The DB is 10 yards away from him, and then you have another guy um, that's coming to pick up the defensive back that dropped back in the zone in the middle. So it looks like this is going to have some success. There's going to be a big play that's going to come out of this, but let's see where the ball actually goes to. Okay, boom. So the ball went out to Tyreek Hill. Um, now, Kelsey uh, finishes route. He came out and picked up the corner. There's a nice duo block here on these two DBs. Yeah. They actually looks like they run into each other and cause themselves some issues. But guess what? That's what coverage is, what you can dictate to the defense, right? You can dictate some of that um, to where they're unsure of their assignments, and that's the whole point. What you do have is a free uh, tackler coming from the inside out, but I believe that's one of the linemen, if I'm not mistaken, or a linebacker who, you know, Tyreek Hill's speed, not happening, right? Yeah, and one of the other things too here, it's a subtle adjustment, um, but it's different than a lot because they use um, Travis Kelsey. Now you've got a bigger body out there blocking on a smaller guy, and that's always a mismatch, right? If you if you run a similar screen uh, with the Commanders, and let's say that ball went to Terry McLaurin or that ball went to Jahan Dotson, and uh, Logan Thomas was one of the other receivers out there blocking. You've got big Logan Thomas out on a 190 pound corner. I'll take that every day of the week. So um, now Terry's or Jahan's uh, chances of a big play increase more because you've got those two blockers out there. One of them is as should be a size mismatch uh, with uh, with uh, with that bigger tight end out there. So it's something s subtle, but uh, I, I mean, it's just smart. It's just smart from the uh, game planning preparation standpoint. Exactly right. And from here, it's just a, it's a guy making moves. <laughs> you got to have a guy that can create, you know. We're going to see another angle of it. This is actually Alex Smith. Holy crap. Okay. Wow. Wow. And there it is. So yeah. it's creating space, right, with your formations and with the intelligence of your offensive play calling. That's actually yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, and I mean, hey, for for Alex Smith, right? Checkdowns, screens. I mean, those those were his best things that he was uh, good at. We saw him do that here um, with getting that check down to uh, JD McKissick early in the uh, early in the down. Like he he would he wouldn't even waste time trying to go through that Scott Turner seven step drop. He would just get it to JD, and JD would turn it for ten yards. So, um, you know, that was a that's a good play. Not uh, not that exciting, but a uh, yeah, good play that keeps the chains moving. Yeah, you know, it's funny, like. It's hard to believe with, with Patrick Mahomes' greatness that in 2017 he wasn't starting. <laughs> like it's 2023. Like it feels yeah. like that guy's been in the league for nearly ever because of yeah. just how much of an impact he's made on the game. Holy oh, crap. And he and he makes 
things that are difficult look so easy. He'll he'll run around back there and then just flick his wrist and the ball goes 70 yards to Kelsey or to Ty, well used to be Tyreek or to Mercole Hardman or whoever else they got now and um you know it's a big play so absolutely and Brian I want to share another one with you this uh, looks like same channel uh same year uh Y stick halfback slip screen is what mm -hmm. I'm seeing here uh let me go ahead and make this full screen and then we'll take a look at this I haven't watched this before but we'll be surprised together so, all right, let's talk about alignment. What do you see here? Uh, looks like we've actually got a I formation with a uh, fullback here, or at least, uh, it, you know, it looks like that to start. He may motion out here in a second. We've got two receivers to the left, and, um, you know, the tight end is in line. And, um, yeah, looks like a very basic traditional formation, but uh, I'm sure there's going to be a twist on it somehow. But very kind of traditional look from uh, from the Chiefs. Yeah, defensively. Uh, this could very easily be uh, some type of uh, cover two, or it could be a man, uh, you know, assignment. It looks like that that defensive back on the outside, at least at the bottom of the screen, has man coverage there, and I believe that's a strong safety that's creeping down in the box up top and a single high up there. The uh, so why stick? So that should tell you what the tight end is going to do. But let's see how this plays. The back is already leaking out, right? And I, I don't know who that back is at this point, but. He is leaking out to the right. The fullback is is getting set, so we'll see what happens here. All right, there's that shift leg. Talk about what happened. Travis Kelsey came left, right? The yep. back is now split out wide, right, matching up with, I believe, um, I can't see who that's out there. The screen's not that clear. And the fullback is now in that pistol formation with Alex Smith. So. Yeah, you, you just took a defender who thought, OK, great, I'm going to be covering a tight end. I'm going to be, um, you know, here up uh, at the line of scrimmage. And now you've taken that defender and split him out wide um, yeah. to where before he thought, you know, hey, I'm going to be in the box. I'm going to have to make a tackle somewhere. Now he is thinking I've got to cover somebody downfield. So his keys, everything have already changed from him inside of a second with this uh with this motion with this shift here so again just you know uh great scheming from them trying to uh stress the defense and see exactly what the what the defense is going to do yeah and, and defensively um you know he flipped outside the linebackers uh so what happens is that outside linebacker comes down to cover the tight end who's now on the end of the formation um it looks like He's not covered up, I believe, by that inside receiver, so he should be eligible. So let's see what happens here. Yeah. So, look, as soon as the snap goes, tight end runs that stick route, right? Yep. And uh, he turns and sits down. The screenplay that's going to happen here, though, you can – look at this. This is, this is what's incredible about this, and I'm trying to be as descriptive as possible, right? You can't even tell – what's happening in terms of a, from the screen perspective, right, Brian? It looks like yeah. there could be a very valid slant being run up here or a corner route by that uh, back that went out wide up top. And then you yeah. have uh, – yeah, this is, this is incredible. Keep going. Well, it, it, because the defensive pressure gets up the field so quick, it almost looks like a broken play, right? It looks like the you know the the defensive lineman just beat their man, and they're in the backfield so quick. But uh, I mean, if you look where the quarterback is, which I'm assuming it's uh, it's Alex Smith, you see that he gets depth. Like he's he's several yards off the ball. He's probably five to seven yards off the ball and he's just drawing those defenders in and you can already see some of the linemen starting to get out uh into space and get ahead of uh the running back uh so they can reset that line of scrimmage and uh, become blockers downfield but it's happening very quickly uh you can see the speed of those defensive linemen getting upfield so it's important for that quarterback to uh to stay poised draw them in and then throw the ball right over their head at the last second absolutely oh okay so everybody's dragging their man on the outside, right? Yep. This defensive back came, or the, the straight strong safety came down with the receiver out here. He has to respect him. This defensive back is tied up with the wide receiver. So there was patience in this throw. They didn't rush it. They committed so the receiver up top could sell that route and now look at the spacing that's created. And now you just have one-on-one -on -one blocks. And your, yep. your blockers got to take their guy out. And it's, uh, it's free lunch money at this point.
Yeah, you you have three defenders with three blockers, and the rest of the defense is on the other side of the field. They're having to play catch up and run across field. And by that time, um, again, I don't know who that running back is, but if that's Antonio Gibson, we're, we're probably talking about a touchdown with his speed. He's going to eat up those yards and get it into the end zone. So that's a that's something that um, you know should benefit Gibson greatly. He should have lots of uh, chunk plays, you know, with this enhanced screen game. Yeah, and. and- I think what we're seeing is this fullback is the one that actually ends up catching the ball. So let's go back to the start of the play. Remember the formation when we start, right? And uh, so you, like you said, you got your off, your eye formation. Right. Then it they turns move. into a, you motion into a pistol package with the fullback now beside the quarterback and that running back splits outside. And you think you have a mismatch on the outside. At least that's what the defense is thinking. Uh oh, I got to yep. cover this running back, right? Um, then what happens is. On the snap, the fullback will come inside like he's blocking, and then he, boom, opens his shoulders towards the quarterback. Quarterback hits him, you know, right in his chest, and then you got numbers. It's all about creating um, mismatches in terms of numbers, right? We outnumber the defense on this side of the field. Look how many defenders are committed to this side of the field, Brian. Exactly. One, two, three, <laughs> four, five wow. are committed to the, to the side where the ball's not even going, right? <laughs> and so wow. then you have – Three guys engage with the offensive line, and now you're playing three on two. Now, yep. why this fullback decided to cut this back in the middle, I'll never know. Uh, <laughs> he got himself tackled, but you're playing three on two at this point, and there's no way this guy's coming over at the top, the deep safety coming up, to put a hit on this guy. You know what I mean? It's not the right angle for him to come yeah. to play. It, this and guy cuts it inside, could have had a walking touchdown. Exactly. On and, and Ellie, you nailed it right there on the head. How many guys are on the wrong side of the field from where the ball actually ends up? And that's the level of preparation and thought behind the game planning and the scheme that Andy Reid had, uh, that Eric Bieniemy has learned under, that we see with like Kyle Shanahan, who's another West Coast zone run scheme, Mike McDaniel down in uh, Miami. We see some of it with like Seattle. I think um, what's the what's the guy's name in Seattle? Shane Waldron. Yeah. Like it, it's that kind of uh, thinking behind that that we haven't had. And you know, again, not to not to talk about the offensive corner who shall not be named, but we didn't have any of that. It was just basic stuff that we were throwing out there. And these defenses are too smart. You have to put work into uh, what you're doing and thought behind it to get them to make mistakes, to widen them out a little bit. Um, you can't just run simple things at them. They'll eat it up. Yeah, absolutely. Let's watch this from behind to, to give a better look. Travis Kelsey motions left. Here's number 42. He's now in pistol. He fakes like he's going to block, sells it, boom, up the middle. Should have gone outside, but he's there. He's so powerful. Look how late that that top side safety gets over there. I mean, it's just you're you're toast at that point, right? Yeah, and and you can definitely tell that was a fullback running it because he ran right to the tackler. (laughs) Instead of of running to the open field, he ran right to the tackler. So you know he was a fullback. He was looking for contact all the way. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, all right, one more for you. This is a bubble screen. Same guy, James Light. Remember, check his channel out. We're using uh, watching his videos tonight. Yeah, he seems to put up pretty good content. And then uh, I want to get your thoughts on a couple other things here. But I'm going to bring this up for us. All right. So we we always like to talk formation of what we're seeing and what we're seeing the defense do, because we've seen this screen game work against man, and we've seen it work against zone coverage just fine. So it's the same season. Uh, bubble screen. Halfback option, right? Yep. Uh, all right. So, again, let's talk formation. What do we got, Brian? Uh, we've got shotgun trips right. We've got uh, three wide receivers or three receivers to the right. We've got a running back offset to the left-hand side of the quarterback with a single receiver um, to the far side, to that left side of the field. So, uh, you know, kind of standard uh, shotgun spread formation that uh, we see uh, all uh, all around the NFL today. And I believe that's Kelsey the tight end split left, right? The lone receiver on the left. Uh, and defensively, I can't really tell. Like, this could be a zone. Um, they also could switch into some uh, match coverage there. They're, with the three receivers on the right, I think in that that little, uh, you know, jumble formation over there, these defenders are going to have to know what to do with what their expectations are. And my guess is before you're running this bubble screen, you're probably showing this formation where you're actually throwing the ball to one of those guys in that jumble set, you know, earlier in the game so 
to get the defenders to commit what's going yeah. on. So, And this is a tough look for the uh, the quarterback because if you look at it, there's a lot of defenders up at the line of scrimmage for this defense. Yeah. Whatever they're doing, they're clearly trying to disguise what they're doing, but they've got a lot of guys. Some of them are standing up. A uh, couple of them are down. Um, with their hand in the dirt, but uh, a lot of them up around the line of scrimmage, kind of moving around. So uh, very, very tough look to to decide. Okay, what what are they actually in? Yeah, and and they're they're showing a a, a pressure look too, yeah. right? Which is exactly what you want to get when you're running a screen. Now, whether or not they they hop out of that when the snap happens, I don't know. But when you get a good screen against a uh, blitz package, it's yeah. house money at that point or house call at that point. Yep. My guess is. This is going to turn into some kind of um, uh, zone over here, or they're going to pass these guys off. Uh, but like, look at this this guy split out wide on the defensive side. I mean, there's only so many routes he can get to. You know what I'm saying from this exactly. position. So he's kind of, I mean, he's almost even with the line of scrimmage, and you know he has some type of responsibility uh, with these with this three receiver group, and he can only get to so much from that position. So um, you like the formation creativity. Let's see if we get any motion on this. Before we start, so the this guy cheating inside, it's like, dude, you're bluffing, and we know it, right? <laughs> but okay, right. yeah. And so, yep. And here we go. So at snap, this one is uh, looks like he's just going to throw it right off the snap. Where the other ones, there was a little bit more of a you know some motion in the play before this yep. happened. This is just this pretty straightforward. Yep. Yep. Get it outside. So the play happens. Boom. These guys are here. Um, they engage again. Look at all the defenders in pursuit, but they're too far away, right? Exactly. So that's that's the great thing. So um, these guys are not going to make a play unless you're already ten yards down the field at least. And, and the quarterback's biggest, you know, kind of responsibility is get the ball out as quick as possible. From snap to throw, we're looking at about a second, second and a half. I mean, this is a very, very quick throw. Just like you said, there's not going to be any motion. He's not necessarily looking anywhere else. Um, the offense is just saying, our guy is faster than your guy. We're going to get it to him before you can bring help over there to uh, to stop him. And it, it, it works. I mean, the ball is out of, uh, I think that's Mahomes, uh, hand so quickly that, uh, you know, if it's Tyree Kill, he, he, I mean, he's got green space all in front of him to run. And we want that. We're, we want that for Jahan or Terry or Gibson or, you know, whoever it is that uh, is going to be on the receiving end of that pass. Yeah, this is this is Alex Smith still same season. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, yeah, this is the running back, and I I gotta look up who number twenty eight was for the Chiefs that year. But uh, yeah, so here we go. And the running back in this offense, he drops the ball. I just realized that, Brian. <laughs> this guy drops the ball. Is that it? um Orlando Scandrick? It's Orlando Scandrick, right? No, Scandrick was a defensive back for the Cowboys safety or something like that. Oh, right? or no, I'm I'm sorry, it's Charkandrick West is who I'm thinking of. No, nah, I think he was thirty five. He was oh, okay. thirty five. Look at this. Boom. He doesn't catch the football. What are you doing? He heard the footsteps. Now, this one wasn't blocked as well um, from the outside guys. I think he would have gotten tackled anyway, um, but it looked like he was headed to. One thing I am noticing about this offense is these guys, when they get the ball in their hands, especially out of the backfield, run to contact instead of away from contact. Yes. Yes. And, uh, we we can't have that. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. If you're a running back or receiver, you you want to run away from the contact. Uh, <laughs> like that fullback, he was definitely running towards the contact. That was yeah. instinct for him. Oh, this is um the guy that's with the Browns now, Kareem Hunt. Oh, oh okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. So look, yeah. yep. I'm gonna watch it from the backside. This gives a much better angle. I don't know why the Jets have their outside guy faking pressure when there's a trips package on the on the on his side of the field. It makes no sense to me because um, mm -hmm. you're obviously not going to bring a rusher from that side. Now, on the left side, yes, they got heavy uh, stacks over here, and you got some options with 26. And my guess is <clears throat> his responsibility is if that back comes out, he takes the back. Otherwise, he's coming at the quarterback. I don't know if we'll get to see it in this angle. No, he falls out because that back did hesitate to the left. Who is this ball going to? Number I'm even 12. getting confused watching this. So this is <laughs> Number 12, this. whoever that is. Yeah. So the yeah that defensive uh, player on the Jets did have coverage on the back, but if that back that hadn't come out, he was going to end up chasing uh, the quarterback on the back side. But look at this, this goes to the inside guy on that pack. Look at him; he's calling his blocks and hadn't caught the ball yet. <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, you get him. I got this." And, and you got to catch this ball. 
one thing to note with the offensive line on this, it, it, obviously it's, uh, it's a screen, but you know, it's still a quick pass part of the quick passing game, um, you know, package is you're not putting so much strain on the offensive line. Like it's real hard for them to do five, seven step drop each time and uh, block 300 pound guys. This is quick two seconds balls out um, and they don't have to block anymore right now. Now the defensive line's chasing the ball downfield. So that takes a lot of strain off of a offensive line that may not be as talented, that may not be as strong uh, or as good or as polished yet as uh, some of the better offensive lines out there. And we certainly, uh, after last year, we can certainly use some of that uh, scheming to take some pressure off those guys because uh, I think we, we've been talking about it, right? It's not necessarily the uh, the most talented group that we've got, but um, you know we've got to find a way to, to squeeze whatever uh, productivity out of them that we can. Yeah, and look at the – you know what they say about, like, offensive line, like high hats, right? Look at these yeah. guys. These guys are – this has to be, like, third or fourth down by the yeah. way that they're they're split. Like, the the tackles are already uh, up and given away that this is a pass play. They're not yeah. even trying to conceal that at this point. No. So, um, man, yeah. One of the things, too, um, just in general with the uh, the screen game, I was reading an article uh, John Kime wrote, and he was mentioning um, one with Antonio Gibson. So uh, Antonio Gibson, they were practicing screens uh, here at minicamp, and he caught the ball and you know got a bunch of yards, but the enemy jumped on him. He said, you can't catch the ball before the line of scrimmage. And Ellie, you know, tell me um, and tell everybody kind of the, the value of that. You know, my only thinking was if he catches it too far down, field he doesn't give his line time to kind of set up and become blockers if you overrun those blocks you could you know basically just cut off you know whatever yards you're going to gain at that point but um they ran the play again he caught the ball behind the line of scrimmage and it was like 40 50 yard gain um because the blocks were there he set it up and then he outran everybody else after that like what's the what's kind of that importance and that's you know this goes back to the enemy harping on those details like what's that importance of catching of where the running back catches that ball in a screen yeah i think you're absolutely right i think it's, it's that and then i think uh because part of the you know one of the big things with springs is it, is it allows blockers downfield right uh freely to, to set up and block where your play is going to go the other thing is you know, sometimes with those screen passes, you don't want to get it around defenders because you're throwing a very flat ball, like right at the guy, right? And if you're, a, in, uh, you're across the line of scrimmage, then there's a defender there that's just going to pick it off, right? You want to give yourself opportunity for success. You know the quarterback's going to be under fire on screens. Don't make him make a difficult throw towards the line of scrimmage where there's defenders already there. No, that's a that's a great point. I didn't even think about that as throwing that uh, away from traffic. Like, <laughs> you know, if you... Uh, I, I don't know how many times we've seen an interception on a screen. Like, that's devastating. Like, you can't do that. Yeah. So that's, that, that's a huge point. Yeah. Well, and when you do that, there's nobody there to go get the guy if he no, picks it off. Touchdown. Yeah, right. that's a touchdown. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm playing this back at half speed, Brian, to really kind of watch the offensive line. Wide splits, right? And then yep. you see the double team starting almost immediately yep. um, based on the coverage. How many defenders come in this scenario is what I'm really trying to see. So they, they have uh, – for those of you that are listening, there were – Two, four. There were six guys at the line. It looks like only two three drop. actually rush, right? One, two, and three. No, four guys are rushing. Four rush, four. two drop out. Two drop out, exactly. And so uh, now you have four on five on the line, and they immediately start double teaming guys. They look like they're pretty clear on their assignments. Their right tackle is alone up top. That rusher is no threat to him because he knows what's going on with the play. I think if you're the Jets and you're the defensive guy here, you want him to get his hand up because it looks like he's actually close to that pass lane, but the linemen are all doing a good job. They then separate on this one, double team to pick up the extra rusher. They did a good job there. And, uh, you know, the guy in the middle is pretty well handled. So Yeah, and you see those linebackers, they're late to realize what's happening. Like, they're still in the middle of the field, and then it's not until, like, the ball is almost over to the receiver that they realize, oh, crap. We, we we've got to you know we we've, we've got to get over to uh this side of the field like they're still there um and uh you know that's that's you know kind of what this play and other plays like this are about is getting that half step ahead of the defense uh is just getting them to hesitate just enough to give your guy a step uh or a, a, an extra you know a little bit of advantage do you think uh and this this can relate to Sam Howell in this case 
look at the linebacker in the middle here. Everybody's out of the backfield, and he's just watching the quarterback. Yeah. Like, like, is he concerned about him running, or is he just not accounting for what the potential assignments are? That that that's really curious to know if we're going to get those types of advantages because I don't know if I'm if I'm um, the Jets here if I'm having a spy on Alex Smith at this point. You know. Like, yeah. Um, I don't know if it's that like you you've heard Ron Rivera talk especially with the the way our defense runs a lot of zone coverage like he Ron Rivera always talks about the defender playing um you know through their you know whoever's in their zone and reading the quarterback's eyes and stuff like that so it, it very much seems like he's got this zone that he's kind of covering in the middle of the field and he's just watching the quarterback right well if somebody crosses his face then he'll go with them and kind of match them inside of his zone um, until they kind of run out of his zone, and then he'll go back to focusing on the quarterback. But, uh, I mean, you know, it, you can tell that the offense understands that, right? They understand what the, the Jets are, are are in here and that, okay, on this third down, they're going to be in a zone-type coverage. We know that the middle linebacker is going to be keying, looking right at the quarterback. That's great. We're going to get the ball out super quick and get it to a, a receiver. And, hey, for a guy like Sam Howell who is inexperienced, you don't know what you're going to get, he could suck. He could be good. We don't know. Well, let's not make it difficult for him, right? Let's not have him drop back seven steps and do a full field read. Let's let's just get the ball out of his hands. I, would you rather have the ball in his hands or Terry McLaurin's or Jahan Dotson's? Like, let's get it into their hands. And I think that's that's what you're going to see. Like, less time in Sam's hands, more time in the uh, in Gibson's hands, in Brian Robinson, in Jahan's hands. And I think that, however, the enemy does that and hopefully creatively gets that into their hands. I think the better off will be yeah so those are some plays that really sort of like illustrate the creativity and i love what you said there i don't care who the quarterback is get it into the playmaker's yeah. hands yeah period yeah. let them do what they're here to do and that's get that ball down the field with the quickness hey i like sam help but i understand he could blow up and he could suck really bad and we want to take pressure off of him right we don't want him trying to decide the game let's let these playmakers like i know what terry can do i want to see that like there are too often times i mean ellie how many times did we watch a game at the beginning of last year and it was the third quarter terry had one catch like yeah. Man, that that can't happen. Unacceptable. And, yeah. and we're we're down three scores, and Terry's got one catch. Like, <laughs> uh, okay, like that can't happen. So I think you're going to see a lot of these manufactured throws, a lot of these simple things. Ball out now, one second, two seconds. Um, you know, no, no kind of just kind of where Sam has to hesitate and read because that's going to be a sack, it's going to be a fumble, it's going to be an interception. So ball out quick, get it to guys who we know can do something with it. Definitely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And honestly, like Tom Brady was is the goat of quarterbacks in his whole game, or 85% yeah. of his game was get the ball out as quickly as possible. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They ran rub routes, but and we'll do it with screens. Let's yeah. make it happen because this can be a really exciting brand of football. Um, because once you start getting that defense to suck up for the screens, guess what? Hit them over the head, right? Over the top. That's that's exactly right. As soon as they creep up, you know, we've got guys who can run by everybody. So, uh, you know, that's kind of the that's kind of the thing. And, um, you know, reading all these articles from OTAs and minicamp, obviously it was all passing focus. Right. There were no pads. They weren't really focusing on run plays. We'll see that in training camp when they put pads on, because, I mean, that's that's really when you want to see the run game. Then I want to see offensive linemen actually blocking people, opening up holes. But. Um, every reporter, everybody was very impressed with the level of detail the uh, B enemy was putting into the screen game, the offensive lineman. Hey, where you need to be, where you're blocking, how long are you holding your blocks before you get out in this space? The running backs catching the ball at the right depth, something I, I didn't even, you know, never really kind of thought of. Um, all those things seems to be better. And again, every every time a screen was run from, you know, all these beat reporters, they went for big gains, which, like I said, I don't know if that's a good thing for the offense or a bad thing for our defense that they were fooled so badly on these screens every time. But, uh, um, you know, hopefully that uh, that pays off on Sundays. I hope so, too, man. And I think, you know, we got lucky a couple of times with J.D. McKissick yeah. um, here. But now I think it will be a regular part of our offense with what, you know, he's able to do. And so. wasn't there wasn't there a season um, with Alex Smith where that's all they did? They didn't. I don't think they had 
a touchdown to a wide receiver. It was all to running backs or something. They went a whole year just manufacturing this stuff. And I think their best receiver was it. Was that Dwayne Bow or wait? Yeah, it was Dwayne Bow. I think was their uh, was their best receiver. And Alex Smith just threw only threw to running backs or something all year. It was some crazy thing like that. Now you know that's an extreme scenario. They didn't have the type of receivers we got. But I mean, it, you know, just kind of goes to show you if you have a good screen game you can manufacture points and yards and touchdowns and things like that. Yeah. You have to be able to have a short game. Every successful offense does it. It's just about how you get into that, uh, you know, offense. And uh, I'm very happy to see that the uh, a screen is going to be a part of what we do. Um, you know, I think one thing that we, you know, a lot of fans and including us may be underestimating is how the, uh, pure run game is going to factor into the screen game. And I, what I mean by that is you want a lot of the same looks, right? Like the thing that really creates confusion for the defense is like running all of your plays out of similar formation so they can't tell what's going on. Your run game out of pistol. Do it effectively. Don't do the Scott Turner one run and you know what's happening, right? But then also run your screen game out of that same formation and then run traditional pass plays out of that same formation. Trips right, right? And you gotta you gotta make the defense respect that any one of those kinds of plays could come out of that formation. We don't want a special screen formation, right? Yeah. Because then that defense has like a, a literature on what's gonna happen in your offense. Yeah, no, you you got to make it so that uh, the defense can't pick up on your tendencies, and that they're not sure. Hey, are you running the football? Are you passing it? Like what what's going on here? Because that also. Um, you know, kind of uh, negate some of their pass rush. Um, if they know, oh, well, this is a pass. This is a five-step, seven-step. I can just tee off on uh, on this offensive lineman and get the quarterback. Uh, then, you know, it just makes things harder for you. But if they have to think, wait, is this is this a screen? Is this going to be another screen? Is this a run game? Oh, all of a sudden, boom, the ball's over my head now, and I'm, uh, I haven't even started rushing the passer yet. So, yeah, you're exactly right. That's a great point. Yeah. Look at this. I'm going back to this guy's channel because he has some really good stuff on yeah. here. This is practice film with Mahomes, um, uh, quarterback, and Williams are running back. And so what he's showing, he's had some cut-ups here. Um, this is offensive line coach Andy Heck with gap screen variations. So, all right, so with this snap, you see that – look how wide this this tackle is. I, I'm sure the pass rusher took him out there. I don't think that's the practice rep you probably want <laughs> just from that defensive end, yeah. I'm guessing. But, uh, you know. Maybe so. Who knows? But uh, then you have your running back matched up with the D end over here. And then let's see what happens from here. So, and he's highlighting that. The, the uh, owner of this channel is highlighting that, that the uh, running back Williams matched up with that defensive end and blocking. So that could be something we see this year as well ourselves, right? Yeah, absolutely. The yeah. and and if you look here, like the splits, you know, in some of those screens that you showed, the splits for the offensive linemen were much wider. Here, there, it's a it's a a lot tighter down. And I remember, you know, when Jay Gruden was here, he had a little bit wider splits. And when they asked him, he was like, "Those are passing windows, right? Those are passing lanes." So the 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 wider they are, um, they're easier for that quarterback to kind of see through and see those receivers running through those passing windows for him to get the ball out. So that's kind of some of the uh, the reasons for offensive linemen splits. Tighter the splits, better for run blocking, getting those down blocks, getting those angles on defensive tackles, combo blocks, those kinds of things. Yeah, and this is actually I, I really like this play setup. So. <clears throat> The one thing I, I'm noticing here, look how far in front of the guard the tackle comes on the snap. I wonder if that's being coached as well, because that could lead to some trouble. You see that right there? Oh, yeah. When they're double teaming? I don't know, you know, because yeah. he, he's here. And that defensive uh, player, if there's if this is John Allen or Ron Payne, he's going to make those two guys trip over themselves. Yep. You know what I mean? Not that it will matter on this screen play, but I, I, I can't imagine that's what they want. Where they're almost interlocked with their steps like that. That that seems a, a little different. Yeah. Maybe it, it definitely looks like he did get a little too far upfield on uh, on that block. Yeah, but look at this. This running back's going to go out and engage this defensive end, which I think is brilliant because watch what happens next. That tackle stays in the block, right? So there's an edge rusher that is left to rush free. Now, I shouldn't say free, but that back's responsibility is going to go pick him up. And so – that tackles in the middle of the field waiting for, for what? The screen to happen. Watch. 
boom, that bat passes off that rusher, right, to basically nobody. So he just lets him free. Boom. Now look where the screen goes. It goes to the back. That edge rusher is out of the play at this point. And look what you got in terms of blockers here. One, two, three. You have your right tackle. What is it? Your second best blocker on the team probably, yep. right? In yep. space, ready to lead you down the field. And there's nobody in pursuit because this guy, the um, nose tackle or the uh, defensive tackle is coming up field. And this edge rusher is out of position because he thought he was coming after the quarterback. <laughs> Just brilliant stuff. And, and and here's the biggest thing, you know, you've got Patrick Mahomes there. He makes everything look easy, but you don't need a Patrick Mahomes uh, to execute that play. You just need the quarterback to understand, I've got to sell this, right? I've got to draw that defensive end uh, in. I've got to wait until uh, the running back disengages, boom, and then I deliver the football. He's he's not going through 10 progressions trying to uh, to find the open man here. Simple play executed really well and uh you just like you said you then get a uh running back with big bodies in front of him um to block in open space yeah and i think you what you're seeing here too from the defense is the defense knows what plays this is right they've probably seen it in practice you know how i can tell look at this uh safety up top he starts moving <laughs> towards the play yeah. before it even happens so he's like yep i've seen this before either he's really good at reading his keys uh, and he says, oh, look, man coverage uh, or the backs on the defensive end, I'm going to come make a play. Or he's starting to move. Like, already he's committed. Boom. He's coming yep. in. He's flying in. He, he saw it. Yep. Or you know what I'd do later in the game is I'd fake something here. I mean, he already knows, like, that some of these linemen are upfield already, right? Oh, so yeah. he's figuring this is going to have to be some kind of play where, you know, a run play or a screen pass, I'm assuming. So, look, boom. Running back gets the ball. Look at this. He's got a freaking escort uh, up the field, however he wants it to happen. That's just beautiful play design right there. Um, and it's, I, you know, it's somewhat non-traditional where that back is coming out and getting the edge rusher there, boom, turning him upfield, and he's golden. You know, yeah. the key is you got to get out to that defensive end, and you have to sell that you're blocking that um, so they don't become wise to what you're doing. The ball comes out. Bang. Look at this. Just beautiful green grass and same color jerseys that you're wearing to lead you up the field. That That is outstanding play design that we have not had the benefit of over the last several years. Yeah, and just think about some of the aggressive, you know, screens, draws, those types of things work on teams that have aggressive uh, defenses, of aggressive pass rushes. Uh, just think about that um, that Detroit game last year where they pressured us and we, we fell apart right in that first quarter. It was done. Uh, I mean, if, if we hit them with a, a screen or two early in that game, that slows down. I mean, w w Aiden Hutchinson, rookie defensive end, had three sacks. We we didn't even block him at all during that game. But if we catch one of these screens here and then it gives that uh, defense a little bit of indecision, oh, uh, is this a run or is this a pass? Is it a screen? And they don't rush his heart. That's that's you know that could be the difference in between you know making a play, making a big gain, or scoring a touchdown. And we just didn't have that uh, at all. Like really, the last couple of years. I mean, the only the only screen I remember working is that Antonio Gibson one in Buffalo, and that was two years ago. Yeah. Exactly, or or JD McKissick making magic out of that situation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Him outrunning the entire defense for a last second touchdown. Like okay, because that's going to happen every Sunday. <laughs> you know, it was great, but you know, like it, you know, he can't do it all the time, and now he can't do it unfortunately. Yeah. So here we got some game footage here against the 49ers. Uh, what do you see in here? I only see two to, two down linemen on defense, and uh, you have a stand-up guy over the center. But uh, it looks like he may back off on the play. Is this no? This is so you've got a um, you've got looks like a uh, receiver um, who's uh, offset uh, from the uh, the tackle on the left hand side. You've got a tight end on the on the right hand side here. Um, they all have pretty tight splits here, and um, you know no backs in the backfield, just Patrick Mahomes. All we can see in this shot here. Yeah, and so where's the screen pass going to go? He's pointing to the guard. They're picking up. Boom! Free rusher on the edge. So, and, like, this – oh, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, I was going to say, if you see on this one, Bosa is out to the left-hand side of um, of the offensive formation, right? Like, he would be uh, – anybody listening at home, he would be where Chase uh, Young usually lines up. And it looks like they're setting him up here, right? Because if I'm Nick Bosa and I see a little small receiver with, the, with a number one on his jersey lined up inside of me, 
uh, my eyes get real big as a defensive lineman. I'm like, that guy's going to block me. It should, it should put warning bells in his head. Something's not right here. There's some kind of trick that's going to happen here because no team is going to have a receiver. Well, maybe Scott Turner might have a receiver block, yeah. block him, but uh, there should be warning bells, but he eats it up and he is up the field quick. So it looks like the chiefs understand Bosa's a problem and they're setting him up because look how fast he gets up the field. And then where does the ball go right behind where Bosa was? Um, so this looks like they're setting Bosa up the whole way with the screen here. Yeah. And you'll notice from the practice footage, we saw that running back carry that block a lot longer, right? But that running back was also uh, coming out of the backfield here. The running back, I, I believe that's a running back. Yep. It's split out wide and, uh, you know, therefore, he just passes that player off. I'm trying to look at that roster to see the uh, jersey numbers because I have no idea. And uh, uh, Andy Heck, uh, the Chiefs. Oh, Andy Heck played uh, here in Washington, uh, early 2000s. Uh, went to Fairfax High School. No so, way, did he? Yeah, yeah. Chiefs. Uh, Andy Heck. Uh, I think he was like a right tackle or something like that for us. I think he's a Michigan guy too. Um. No, oh, no, he went to Notre Dame, but yeah, he went to uh, Fairfax uh, Woodson. And um, 99, 2000, he was here with the uh, with the skins. It made me think of the cash money for the nine nines and two thousands <laughs> cash money record. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. I have no idea who this uh player is, though, by the way. Number one, I don't know this. Uh, yeah, I was trying to look it up for you guys to listen. I have no clue who this guy is. Um, yeah, so we're gonna let it go. Uh, but I'm gonna finish out this play, and then if you're in the comments, let me know if you can figure out who that guy is. But um, all right, so he he just whiffs on this <laughs> block yep. attempt, and maybe that's all he's supposed to do, but it wasn't even close. He, it was patty cake on the back. Yeah, he was like, yeah, whatever. Give me the ball. Let me make something happen because that's what I get paid to do, right? Yeah, and 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 definitely, you can see that they knew that Bosa was going to be a problem, so they said, you know what? Let let's go ahead and take Bosa out, and they fed Bosa some easy eye candy. Bosa saw this little small number one and said, "Oh, I'm going to crush the quarterback. He can't stop me." And boom, he's up the field, and they throw it right to the guy um, who was in front of Bosa. I mean, that's just it's it, it's just smart. And it's, it's again, an easy throw for the quarterback. Again, he's just got to hold it and not get, you know, not panic, draw that defender in, and then just throw the ball. That's it. He doesn't have to make 10 reads. Yeah, and look at this run by this. This this is killing me. Like, I would love is to see him fake inside Archer? and go outside. Huh? Is that Dre Archer? Who is that? No, I don't think so, dude. I, wanna, I feel like that might be uh, – I don't know. I don't want to guess wrong because I know – they're going to let us hear about it in the comments. <laughs> you guys don't know your players. <laughs> yeah. Definitely let us know who it is in the comments because we're, we're dying here. We, we've guessed everybody in the NFL. Yeah, I'm still looking up numbers on my phone as we're going through this. But uh, uh, so look, so yeah, I just I want to see them finish their runs better. But, I, I, you know, I don't know if that's going to be a concern for us. I just hate the way that they always seem to run to tackles at the end of their runs. Yeah. Now, this guy is just blazing speed, but he also had it to the outside already. Yeah, but good God, he's fast. <laughs> I thought he was going to be toast, but yeah. So, anyway, some brilliant stuff there. And once again, shout out to Jason Light and his channel. Um, yeah, that's excellent. excellent information there. If you're interested in Andy, uh, excuse me, the uh, Chiefs offense that might come here, he has good stuff there. So, Brian, um, final thoughts on the screen game, man? I'm excited. It's such a simple concept, the screen, but it's so effective. And we we saw Andy Reid abuse us with it when he was in Philly. I mean, he did it with Brian Westbrook um, at every time that they played us. Uh, Corell Buckhalter, um, those two running backs would eat us up with those screens in Philly. And then he went to Kansas City and did it with a bunch of guys. We don't even know their names. I mean, we just watched a clip of a couple of them. He did it with fullbacks um, that we don't even know their names. And um, there's no reason it can't be done here. And it looks like it's going to be done here. And I think I think we have good enough backs. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little worried about Chris Rodriguez, but, um, you know, I think I, th I think Gibson's going to feast on these things. And I think you're going to see some big – big plays with Gibson um, catching some of these screens. And then, right, if they start to key on Gibson, okay, put both Gibson and Brian Robinson in, in the uh, backfield. Now which one? And throw one to Gibson. Like, or uh, throw one to uh, to Robinson. Like, you 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 
you have so many options that you can do that with. And then uh, as much as I might not like Brian, uh, Curtis Samuel um, getting uh, run plays, you can, he's another one. You can put him in the backfield, motion him out wide, um, split him out wide from the backfield. Like, so many different things that um, that you know I've, I've been listening to Logan Paulson and he, he's been amazed at how much variation they put in. And Ellie, you're gonna have to tell me on this one because this is something I didn't think about. And um, Logan did a video. He said he saw the receivers putting in mid route uh, audible. So you know if the receiver gets a certain look from the defense when he lines up, he'll make a call to the quarterback and let him know, hey. Um, you know, this go route I was going to run, I'm going to stop at mid route and turn around and you're just going to throw it to me right now because the, the safety setting deep and the corner setting 10 yards off the ball. I don't need to run a go route. They're going to be running right with me. I can stop it now for six yards and boom, I can turn it up. And I was like, wow, like that's something that, um, you know, you pointed out in a couple of those videos. Some of those corners were 10 yards off the ball. How many times did that happen to us over the last couple of years where our corners were 10 yards off the ball? They just throw the ball quickly, and then uh, they gain eight yards on us. Um, so that was something that um, he was surprised. The enemy has already put in with our receivers, um, and that's not something I honestly never even really thought about. Yeah. So, and, you know, most offenses have choice routes, um, but this sounds like they're indicating what they're going to run before the plays even snap, right? Where choice routes are like the quarterback and the receiver have to be on the same page, and they're going to – they know – where that choice route is going to take them based on what the defense is giving them. But uh, this is kind of cool what you're talking about. I want to see what what that looks like. Um, I don't know if we'll get that in preseason, but that's pretty interesting. Yeah, no, it was a cool day. You know, it was Logan Paulson, Fred Smoot, and Santana, you know, kind of recreating the play and kind of how it would look, right? If the receiver sees the corner setting outside and deep or the safety, he knows immediately, okay, I'm just going to I'm gonna run to five yards, six yards, and sit and turn around and uh, get that pass now, as opposed to, uh, you know, continuing that route and then, you know, trying to catch a contested ball. Yeah, the, the danger in that is if, so my, one of those players doesn't get the right signal. Yeah. And they, and now that quarterback's just throwing the ball straight to the defense because only the receiver got the signal, didn't give it to the quarterback. But yeah. that's why you have practice, right, to get those things perfected. So, yep, yep. Um, look, all in all, I'm I'm super excited. You know, this screen game is only going to help the run game, which only help the other passing game. So we need it. I'm, I'm excited to see it. You see how many different variations they get into this screen game with. Um, just creativity, 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 man. Shout out to Eric Bieniemy. Shout out to all the running backs because I think they're all going to play a part in the screen game. Um, even Chris Rodriguez, you know, you saw that fullback split out to that pistol yeah. formation, right? So, he he would be that fullback running to contact. He would just run right <laughs> into the linebacker. Yeah. Nobody else around, he'd just run right in the linebacker. Yeah, just the Madden. Boom! Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. But uh, I'm excited, dude. I cannot wait for training camp. It's almost here. Um and we'll see a lot more of this develop as we go. Last thing, it officially announced July twentieth. That's it. That's uh, they're going to vote, and that's going to be uh, that's going to be final. July twentieth. It's here after twenty five years. July twentieth is the date. Yeah, celebration, man. Good times, and you know what? New era. And like I said on social media, man, I'm already moved on from Dan Snyder, right? Like I'm already in the new era, and I know. Same. Look, it, you can't really do that until it's official. But in my mind, I'm like, I'm over it, uh, over Dan Snyder, like completely and entirely. And I'm ready to see this new chapter turn. And it starts with training camp. And so training camp won't have the full, like, icky feel of Snyder all over it, right? Um, and especially preseason. And preseason is one of my favorite times of the season. I say it every year. And I mean it because, number one, you get to see your football team in action for the first time. Number two, you get, um, you know, some of those young guys trying to make the roster and you see those guys start to shine a little bit. Everybody's hopeful. Um, I love preseason football, man. It means football's back, right? All of that. So I'm looking forward to that. But more importantly, I want to see what our quarterbacks do. And, um, you know, we're not going to show the complete offensive preseason. I think teams are starting to show more than what they used to in the oh, yeah. preseason. You remember they used to come out. Nobody's running any type of like routes. They're just like running the stick routes to everybody. Okay, we're good. Three plays, we're out of here. Now you're yeah. starting to see motions and things like that in the preseason. 
Yeah, I think the uh, and I I don't know if it if it's been said or if it's been reported if the uh, the Raven practices leading up to the Ravens preseason game if that'll be televised or not. I'm not sure if they are. I think one year they had joint practices and they were televised and you could see on NFL Network and you can see them going through the you know the drills and stuff against uh, the other team. Uh, so I hope that is because I think that that'll be some good stuff to get insight. Well, you know, obviously the quarterback will be center stage, but all of the positions like Ravens always have a good team. How's that going to look right? You know, we, we've seen our secondary look uh, look good. Are they going to look good against uh, Lamar Jackson and what, Odell Beckham, I think, is on the team? Yeah. Um, you know, are they going to look good against that? Um, so w- we'll see. Uh, hopefully that is televised because that uh, they'll be an interesting one. Cannot wait. All right. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, Commander's Declassified Podcast. If you used to be with us on Apple, go find our podcast again. Resubscribe. Redownload the podcast. We're sorry. That's just what it is. It's what time it is. So if you've been with us, uh, if you've had it the last couple of weeks, you're good. This is for like our OG subscribers um, before. Go find the podcast. Download it again. Follow it. Leave a comment. Like. All that stuff. Um, we appreciate each and every one of you. Have a good week, and we'll be back with more next week with Eric uh, back from his cosmetology um, <laughs> graduation. So, peace and blessings, everybody. We are out of here.